Hey guys, Christopher here. I'm remote today, so I apologize. Uh, and my internet connection, which was fantastic earlier, is now uh, kind of going on and off. So the charts are going from being active to not active. So let's take a look at this morning and get the context of everything. Uh, so if I go to my, at least on the NASDAQ, if I go to the 71 uh, new bars chart, our hybrid custom candle that feeds data to our uh, dry bars. So we actually have a combination of two bar types working in concert together. Very unique approach, but it works fantastic for identifying these high probability pattern-based setups. So we had multi-month highs on the NQ created in the overnight session. Uh, the, or let's go just kind of get you lined up here with the timing of everything. This is uh, roughly after 5 a.m. Uh, Chicago time. So, you know, middle of the night, early morning, before the Globex session opens at 8.30, or I should say the U.S. stock market, which I call the U.S. cash session, opens at 8.30 Chicago time, and all the main indices get very active. So... Uh, right out of the 8.30 open, which is right about this area of price, this is about the 8.30 open, not much going on. So I was just sitting there on my, you know, sitting there waiting, sitting on my hands waiting, thinking we might get a run up at a minimum to right away test overnight resistance. And this happens to be, you know, in our extensive training, we have the uh, four hour and daily chart levels are critical. And I'm sure, you know, I did a pretty good job emphasizing that in that training. So this is a four hour chart and a daily chart level. You know, if you look at it from the daily chart, the market hasn't been up this high in months since what, May? So we fail out of the open to come up and test that level. What does that mean? We miss here. And we put in a lower pivot high here and we miss here. What does that mean? It means weakness. It means the market's weak out of the open. So right away out of the open, we have a W pattern forming. So as far as the higher time frame goes, that was a, a primary setup. And it did work for a little bit of a run, but it stalled out. So anybody that wanted to jump in and, oh, I got to be long right away out of the open in the first 10 minutes or so, 11 minutes, there was your setup, and you, you wouldn't have lost anything. I was sitting on my hands. I, I was I was preferring to see if we could come up and test, you know, get some range extension or fail in this area, then if on the lower time frame, if I get an M pattern sell, or if I'm not getting that on the higher time frame, if I get a four bar reversal, then I can work the short side a little bit. If she breaks out and just runs, then I'll have to find a trend following setup. So I'm not here chasing. So in life, when you chase something, you don't get it necessarily. You, have, you want to attract things to you, not out of chase. So, so anyhow, uh, I sat back. Now I did watch this M pattern formation. And let's jump on now to the lower time frame and see what the lower time frame looked like as that M pattern was forming. So here we are. The, and you can see we, had, we put in a lower pivot high, so I was watching that. And on the lower time frame from the open going forward, I have absolutely no primary trade setups at all, which is very, very rare. Normally, you know, first 10 to 15 minutes, we've had one, maybe two. I don't have a single one, so I'm sitting on my hands. And we haven't reacted now, I was paying attention to the market putting in higher pivot lows, and I really thought on this push that we were going to come up and take a shot. And uh, on a lower time frame, that is a trend following entry. I could have taken that entry. But I like a market that's very near a key level to play, you know, at least come up and play in that area and show me what you got. So the inability and the M pattern being created on the higher time frame. And then I got that structural shift to the downside. I got short right here. That is not a primary trade setup. But so, so the market failed to hit the overnight session and the multi-month high. 
But just from a local early morning price action standpoint, this pivot came up, uh, was unable to break above the initial opening range, rolled over, and I'm like, okay, uh, I'm seeing weakness here. I'm taking a shot to the short side. It's already you know, 9.04 or 5 a.m. We've had 34 minutes since the open. We can't come up and test, so I took a shot. That is not a primary trade setup. Secondary, it worked. And then I added right here where we got our first primary trade setup uh, of the morning. Well, actually, this technically was a primary trade setup right there to the wrong side. So uh, this is our second setup. It's a trend following. So I added and that worked out. Uh, we had two more areas where you could have entered and both would have worked. Then the next primary trade setup we got on the lower time frame. We did have a W pattern long that that worked, uh, got a caught a little nice little move. Then I was watching the market, kind of coiling up. See how it's coiling up, and I really like this overall look right now, or overall look of the uh, of that of that pattern. As you can see, we have a very mild W pattern building right as that was taking place. So that was a trade I ended up taking this morning. That that was not a primary setup. That worked out pretty good. Uh, I took an M pattern short just a little while ago. As soon as I got green bars, I'm out. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done. So I went way over goal on the day of my first trade with NQs. Then I moved to MNQs and traded uh, uh, traded that setup and that setup. That was a primary uh, buy setup right there, and that definitely worked. M pattern sell, then we actually had a W pattern buy. That that worked also. So now, now we've just are putting in another uh, you know kind of M pattern rollover right here. So, but you know we're at one twelve in the afternoon Central Time, Globex time. Uh, what is that? You know two twelve Eastern time. You know stock market. You know Wall Street time. So. This type of time of day, I'm usually not even trading. I'm usually done, you know, uh, by nine, you know, getting into, I'd say, as far as Chicago time, you know, 9.30 to 10, I've usually at least had one or two trades. And then I'm already, you know, contemplating, hey, I'm at goal or above, should I just call it a day? And it just depends. If the market's very narrow range, uh, maybe if there's news later in the day, I'll wait till later in the day. If all the news is played out for the day, I'm not going to get in until I see something really, you know, a good primary trade setup. But you should be able to see this too on the higher time frame. You know, it was a very mild W pattern. Now, what do we need to have a W pattern? And then we had the structural shift on the momentum shift there. That was a W pattern and that got a bit of a run. Um, and let me uh, go ahead and exit the drawing. We can clean this up. We have to have at least two bars down of one color, at least two bars up of the opposite color, at least two bars down of the opposite color, and at least two bars up, and then we have to have a structural shift. So we barely met the criteria. We have two red bars or more. We had two, three. Did we have two green bars? Yeah, we had those, at least two. Did we have at least two? Red bars down, yeah, they were hollow bars, but they're bars. And did we have two green up at any point when we get the structural momentum shift from downside momentum to upside? So yeah, we did. So that was a W pattern on the higher time frame. So I'm always looking at what is what kind of pattern is building. Like th this was a very easy trade to make today. Inability to go up and test the overnight session high that was not far away from price. Institutionals in four minutes, five minutes, could have ran it up here and tested on one of these pushes, and they did. So, and then putting in a lower uh, pivot than the prior one, and we're already uh, past 9 a.m., so over 30 minutes is traded. Uh, I just, it looked weak to me this morning, and right when we got the structural shift, I got in, right as this bar, or this price action was forming right here. So I saw the M starting, you know, wrapping up its development on the higher time frame. So some of these summer days, you know, institutionals, they either are coming in right away with conviction up or down, or they're just sitting and waiting. This is one of those days they kind of didn't really interact or engage much. 
There was a couple light attempts to lift right out of the open, but there was no, they weren't, they weren't triggering any more newly initiated buying. And for some reason, they didn't want to run it up into uh, overnight session uh, levels. They just, it was just weak. So the pushes would come on strong and then they would just stall. Pushes would come on and there was some selling into some of the pushes too. They were getting, we were getting slapped down quickly on some of these pushes. So in other words, the up move was slow, but would accelerate, but then the slap down was quick. That showing me that as it's lifting, somebody's selling into it, somebody's selling into it, somebody's selling into it. And I'm not talking retail side selling into it, I'm talking at least medium size and some larger uh, players. So today, that was the really good area to get in and hit it with the inability to run up. And some of the best trades are when the market is reacting to four hour and daily chart levels. The market can really run hard from a resistance level or really run hard from a support level once tested. Or it can break up through resistance or break down through support and get a run going. So then you got to get in on the trend following side as it's building momentum as the support failed or the resistance failed. This coiling up right in here, I really like the look of it today. You know, just from a standard price pattern, that was really coiling up. So getting in right here to me was not of super high probability. If it would have run a little bit, then I got in. That to me would have been of lower prob or of higher probability. But I like the look of it. I was way up on the day, and I was already switched over to MNQ. So it's like. I'm not going to, you know, taking this trade is not going to risk that I'm already over daily gold transitioning out of NQs over to MNQs. So there's no way I was going to end up, even if I lost in this trade, below my daily goal. It was way over daily goal. So playing with some MNQs and the rest of the price action. And the main thing is I thought, hey, maybe now we're going to, they pulled it back and now they're going to come in and jam it up and test the overnight session high. And they, they keep failing. So maybe they'll do it here. They've got it parked not too far. Maybe uh, in the last hour and you know 40 minutes of trading today, maybe institutionals will push and try to get a little short covering run uh, into the last part of the day when those that are ho holding short positions uh, from the overnight session or from any of these peaks on the day will be very likely to let go uh, into any hard push at end of day. So they might be gaming everybody a little bit before they really ram it up there because they want range extension higher, whether it's today or not. And remember, tomorrow is non-farm payroll. So getting some range extension either into end of day now or in the overnight session would not surprise me leading into a non-farm payrolls day where the numbers come out at 7.30 Chicago time, you know, the free U.S. cash session, which opens an hour later. So there you have it. So remember, these summer days can be choppy. Uh, we're coming into the wrap-up. Usually September, the price action is very uh, clean out of the open. There's less indecisiveness, a little bit less games because more participants are coming back in. The summer period is over. Uh, but you got to admit, the market's back to levels from May. Uh, we've done a good job. The market's done a good job ignoring a bunch of huge negative uh, situations in the world uh, and uh, you know structurally in the financial markets and central banking related and governments that won't stop overspending and keep coming up with new programs that do absolutely nothing positive whatsoever they're all they're all just full of uh, dysfunctional additional spending uh, but anyhow there you have it if you have any questions just wanted to kind of cover the uh, day today and uh, let's see what we get tomorrow with the non-farm payrolls. Have a great day.